Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. The COVID-19 protocols have been adjusted to allow some concessions for fully vaccinated persons. The Minister for Agriculture continues to dialogue on the future of the NFTO. And I tell BPO successful expansion into St. Lucia. The government of St. Lucia has approved amendments to the COVID-19 prevention and control measures effective the 31st of May to the 30th of June 2021. As St. Lucia continues to strengthen its vaccination campaign and after careful deliberation on recommendations from the command centre, the Cabinet of Ministers has agreed to adjust the COVID-19 protocols to allow some concessions for fully vaccinated persons. This includes allowing competitive sporting activities and social activities for a limited number of persons, both with strict protocols. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney made the announcement. Returning nationals and visitors with a negative PCR test and who are fully vaccinated will not require quarantine. And random COVID-19 testing will be done at the airport at all points of the airports on their arrival. Additionally, those persons who have a negative PCR test but have not been vaccinated will still have to do the 14-day quarantine. Social events with up to 50 fully vaccinated persons may be permitted after authorization through the Ministry of Health. A person with a valid liquor license may permit an individual on licensed premises to consume intoxicating liquor. A competitive sporting activity may be permitted within a controlled facility with spectators on condition that persons in attendance are fully vaccinated. Sporting events or activities must receive approval from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. All public health measures such as mandatory mask wearing in public, social distancing and washing and sanitizing of hands remain in place. The curfew remains 9 p.m. daily. And the national vaccination drive continues next week. The sites are as follows. Monday, May 31, Sufre Hospital Grounds and Fiji Sports Complex. Tuesday, June 1, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds and Philip Maslet Grounds. Wednesday, June 2, VG Sports Complex and Denry Mothers Preschool. Friday, June 4, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds and Jack Mill Wellness Center and VG Sports Complex. Meantime, in an update on the NTN Information Command Center regarding COVID-19 protocol breaches for the period March to May 2021, Assistant Commissioner of Police Dr. Mashama Sili indicated that the highest arrests have been for non-adherence to the curfew and non-adherence to wearing a mask. Of the 1,231 recorded curfew and mandatory mask breaches, 250 arrests were made. Breaches in business sector registered at 194, with 30 arrests being made. They either do not have proper protocols in place, so they do not have sanitizing stations, they do not have or they do not maintain social distancing when people are going to the teller on the line or the clerk on the line. Um, and so oftentimes the officers have to go in and ensure that this is done. We also have an issue where the curfew is at nine and businesses uh, close exactly at nine o'clock. And so what you find is that after nine, there are hundreds of vehicles out on the road and it's after curfew. So we're asking that uh, businesses close in time so that their workers and they themselves can get home before curfew, which is nine o'clock, um, so that we can enforce the protocols and ensure that everyone is safe. Lawmen also intercepted 13 house parties resulting in four arrests and 30 mass crowd events resulting in two arrests. You will find that we have those issues more on the weekend now. So from Friday to Sunday, we have to go to, we're given information that somebody's having a house party. They have, it's not, you know, their family members are not the ones at the party. They're, it's more than the 10 that is allotted in the protocol. And so we have to shut down those activities. During the holidays, you will find 
um, people congregating on the beaches in large numbers, especially uh, Pigeon Point Beach and Sandy Beach. And they're, they're not maintaining the social distancing um, as they should. And then you'll find two weeks later, we have an increase in infections. There were 22 cases of breaches in home quarantine and state quarantine. 13 cases of hotel breaches were also registered, resulting in one arrest. The total number of arrests made during the reporting period of March to May 2021 is 288. Meanwhile, all 163 minibus travel breaches registered for this period were let off with warnings. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, recently chaired a meeting on the status of relations between the National Fair Trade Organization and the government of St. Lucia. Anissa Antoine reports. As the government of St. Lucia moves to gain more involvement in the National Fair Trade Organization, NFTO, Agriculture Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph convened a meeting with all nominees who are expected to fill in the executive positions on the organization's board of directors. The meeting, which took place on Thursday, May 27, 2021, demonstrates the government's commitment to initiating the strategic new direction, which it says will benefit the NFTO and its member farmers as the previous operating procedures proved ineffective. The options that were put on the table by the consultant in restructuring the NFTO, all three options refer to government having full control and the farmers participated in that, in that, in that process. I, am, I believe the farmers are more disappointed, or the majority, of them, the majority of them are more disappointed that we did not take full control. And I do, that is not the thinking of government. The thinking of government is to see how we can work with the farmers. We believe that there are enough individuals um, in the respective groups that can provide proper leadership. I have the fullest confidence in that. What they need is the support. Um, and that is what I am comfortable with the support of my, my cabinet. We are comfortable in giving the support and not to take over. According to Minister Joseph, the government is continuing to collaborate with the NFTO board to put the legal framework in place to begin restructuring the banana industry. The recent bailout in the amount of $4.5 million was made possible through a loan facility acquired through the Ministry of Finance to pay off banana farmers. I must say that whilst we have, um, as a government, despite the fact that we did not um, receive on a timely basis a reply from the NFTU as far as members are concerned, we took a decision with the support of Cabinet and um, the Minister of Finance to pay some advance payment to the banana farmers. Now it has moved from 13 weeks, um, well, it has moved from week 13 to week 20, because when they wrote us sometime in April, they were owing banana farmers from week 7 to week 13. Today we learned that it has moved from week 13 to week 20. So there's still a lot of money outstanding for the banana farmers, which of course we had factored in, in the loan that we are getting from the from the um, Central Development Bank with the support of the Ministry of Finance. Minister Joseph notes that the immediate goals of the NFTO, as well as the government of St. Lucia, are to ensure that farmers are paid on time and that they produce high quality commodities. It is going to be um, even more discouraging, right, if the board cannot um, increase its market share, move on the UK market and the, and the regional market. So if the, if the board cannot do that, and, and what I'm learning today is that there is an interest and there, is, there have been requests by the supermarket through the fruit fives that they want more fruits. So it's for us now not only to sell more fruits, but to sell more quality fruits. That's important. Um, because we cannot continue to, to export fruits and when it reaches up there, almost 50% of the fruit is being dumped, right? And, in, and instead of the, soup, the importers of our fruit owing the NFTO, the NFTO is owing the importers. We cannot continue that. We have said so before.
Minister Joseph reaffirms the St. Lucian government's commitment to assisting the island banana farmers, constituents who are pivotal to the success of the island's agriculture economy. ITEL BPO continues to expand its operations in St. Lucia, having opened its doors on the 15th of July 2020 with 30 employees. The business now employs some 400 St. Lucians. Featured in the program In the Know, produced by the Office of the Prime Minister, Founder and Chief Executive Officer Yoni Epstein explained that the company has been working with Invest St. Lucia to expand even further. The business is already outfitting another facility and is looking to increase its staff complement to 1,200. With the second building, we're, we're coming up close to about 700 employees on the ground. With the additional 30,000 square feet, we want us to be, to be closer to about 1,200 employees here in St. Lucia. Okay. Uh, we love the South. We'd have, we, although I love the North, we don't <laughs> have any intentions to go to the North. I mean, we, we feel very confident of being in this campus-like uh, facility. Um, in the second building we just finished building a canteen um, as well too and I'm told that the caterer is going to take over on the 1st of June and um, that will just really make life a lot easier for our team members and everybody to be in one one area and we enjoy the south. It's it's easy to get in and out of from our perspective as as well as the quality of staff that we're seeing in the south are, are great and, and it's, you know, from a, I understand from a transportation perspective, those that are coming from outside of the South have a fairly easy way to get here as well. So, you know, it's been a great partnership. It's been a great marriage thus far, and um, we're going to continue growing. In St. Lucia, ITEL BPO was able to hire new employees who had lost their jobs in other sectors, including the tourism sector, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Epstein noted that St. Lucian employees have exceeded expectations thus far. Every country that we're in has their, their uniqueness. Um, and I would say what we've seen with St. Lucia so far is we're seeing greater productivity. Um, we're seeing lower absenteeism and lower attrition than some of our traditional countries that we operate in. And, and to me, um, you know, that just says a lot for going back to our four whys, the quality, mm -hmm. right? quality of staff are producing as good or better than you know more senior sites so that means that they actually have more to gain yeah right when you think about reliability you know we're we're confident they're going to be coming to work because we see our attrition lower we see our absenteeism lower um you know when you think about integrity um you know we're, we're not having to worry about certain aspects of potential fraud or cyber crime or things like that here in in, in saint lucia and then family, they've, I mean, we are, we're coming up June, uh, July 15th last year is when we, we opened the site officially. Mm -hmm. um, so we're coming up on a year in St. Lucia and they've just, you know, immersed themselves into the family culture as if they've been here for years. The founder and CEO indicated that the plan has always been to expand, hiring new staff and increasing clientele. Some aspects of this plan were fast-tracked due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has affected business operations the world over. We went out to a few clients, we set a target, we said, you know, within the first year, let's attempt to get to 200 employees. And we weren't really sure how the client take-up was going to be, because although I may believe St. Lucia has what it takes, our clients also have to believe that it has what it takes, because they're taking a gamble. Mm -hmm. As we know, it is an industry that has been here for some years, yes. there is experience in it, however, um, it's not widely known. Mm -hmm. um, so. Our clients took a gamble with us and basically because of the, the, the power of our brand um, and ITEL saying to them, you got to try St. Lucia, come with us, test it out, let's right. see. Um, they said, you know what, it's worth it. We want to expand our footprint. We want some country redundancy. We trust you guys. You guys have done great work for us. Let's go. And as we started on that, that journey of going to different clients, and I think also the, the pandemic actually helped to fast mm -hmm. forward that because people wanted more and more redundancy there was you know different protocols and uh, depending on the country you went to there was lockdowns because of what was happening in a particular country or a, in a major city um, so this gave them greater coverage founder and chief executive officer of itel bpo yoni epstein this is ntn nightly up next primus hutchinson with the ntn nouvelle aquayol here at St. Lucia Distillers, we produce an award-winning range of rums and rum products. 
We export our rums to the Caribbean, North America and Europe. Standards facilitate our entry into overseas markets. In the rum business, it is critical that our distillers and blenders get it right. St. Lucia Distillers is HACCP certified. We use two standards from SLBS, the standard for labeling of pre-packaged foods, SLNS 1-3-2014 and the national specification for rum, SLNS 12-2003. We are also a registered member of the West Indies Rum and Spirit Producers Association, WISPA. SLBS ensures that we are up to standard and world class. This message is brought to you by the Commonwealth Standards Network. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayor. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Kenya's Responsibility for Information and Government Services, that's the GIS, that's the Television National Pair NTN, covers the Nouvelle Aquayor. Presenter Primus Hutchinson. Premier Minister Onewab Alan Chasney, which is a city recently, Hot Miami, Florida, and who profited the occasion to discuss the GIS this year, plusieurs projets qui dicaient porter grand bénéfice à l'industrie bateau tourist pour payer. Premier Minister Chasney déclare que les gens gardent ces divers ports pour bateau tourist à Ouijon, et que cette ville est une bonne chance pour embrasser plus qui a pile d'io et faire comprendre que. À présent, ces bateaux touristes là ni brisent plus qu'ils y ont pour pour accoster. Et pour ça, ça là, c'est aussi car ils savent pour un bon lavatage. Mais mais cela explique aussi projet Europe neuf qui va nous faire complémenter sérieusement le développement secteur bateau touristes en face à tout ce que c'est. Mais mais cela ne explique que construction Europe neuf là qui est faite à des en façon qui va qu'il affecter l'autre établissement qui déjà qui existe. Particulièrement Europe qui est déjà là. Arrangement neuf là qui facilite les passagers pour servir via Europe et en Europe, qu'on y en qui plus facile avant de aller bâtir bateau. Tout arrangement qui est en place alors les yo qui te facilite à pour bateau ça là qui est pas plus qui à distance de yo lié et demi toute nécessité yo qui est déjà à bord bateau à d'avance malgré service là d'une immigration pas qui fait en place ça là. Premier ministre Charles nous dit que malgré industrie tous là tu es excité pour tous ces bénéfices, l'initiative de la Caïporte. Malheureusement, la tenue de cette situation qui est chagrinée, en parmi ces difficultés, ces situations financières, l'industrie de la Caïporte, et plus toujours, l'industrie a voulu assurer la qui initiative de nouveau de la Caïporte à ses services sortis vieux fort pour les restants, ces passagers qui ont abordé ces bateaux. Parce que, si le Premier ministre là, ce n'est pas tous ces passagers à bord de ces bateaux qui sont sortis de ci Alors, il y a des autres passagers à bord de ces bateaux qui sont allés à ce excursion pour journée. Pour raison de ça, c'est que si on travaille près et puis on peut faire des choses qui souffrent plus près de vieux fort à ce castrui. Et que ça a servi de ça à souffrir plus tôt. Mais une autre façon, c'est pour organiser une visitation entre vieux fort et souffrir. Le Premier ministre Chasse a déclaré qu'il est très excité et qu'il est pour la nuit un bon agrément entre le secteur de bateau touriste et puis celle-ci. La première phase du projet pour nettoyer et déboucher dans le dos de John Compton en tête de chemin, mais l'aide, j'ai fini complètement à présent. La première phase-là, c'était pour nettoyer toute la bouteille qui était semblée au lieu de la pour faire possible pour qu'il y ait une grosse capacité de réserve de l'eau en facilité de la nuit. Dame Glow John Compton a massé en haute de 1.7 cubic mètres de bouteille pour ces plusieurs années qui passaient et qui ont résulté déplacer plus de 400 millions de gallons de l'eau. Selon un ancien Go Greg Wasco, en plus lancé de bouteille ça là, c'est en cause des mauvais temps et cyclones qui frappent le pays en ce temps qui passe et aussi cyclone Thomas en l'année 2010 et mauvais temps débit en l'année 1994. Selon le chairman gagne directeur Wasco, Francis Dembo, l'année en l'eau boussaï à Damla, toujours, et qu'il prend à peu près 10 ans pour tirer tout. Mais le plan Wasco, c'est pour tirer en l'eau 300 000 pieds cubiques à ces boussailles. Sa Selon Dembo, pour yon moun vieux copain de gwe boussailles là, c'est comme si c'est 50 savants sport football. 
avec chaque nuit à peu près 20 pieds de boussaille. Et bien, comme on l'a pas une pièce de monnaie, il y a une caisse à tirer toutes ces zones de salle en yon pour des années. Il y a ajouté qu'il y a une caisse seulement ça tirer 200 pieds cubiques de boussaille en yon l'année. Et ça, ça a fait seulement du bon temps la pluie, pas du bon temps le soleil. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour l'agriculture, la pêche, les ressources naturelles et coopératives, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, dit qu'il était satisfait. Et puis, le travail que j'ai fait, malgré la saison, la pluie a été fait très difficile. Le ministre des ressources naturelles là, fait comprendre aussi, même l'année qui a été fait si pour le travail là, commencer, il a trouvé affecté au temps et puis la pluie, et qu'il a pris le temps de perdre à ce projet. Honorable Joseph dit que c'était une initiative neuf pour les gens. Et l'expérience euh, là instruit en pile. Deuxième phase pour ça là, quand il commence en trois mois pour venir. Ministre de la responsabilité pour l'agriculture, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, j'ai apporté une bonne nouvelle pour les cultivateurs FIG PIA et puis ils ont 4,5 millions de dollars d'assistance pour payer des dettes NFTO et pour soulager la situation financière des femmes à FIG. C'est le ministre agricole là, comme la Bocconi a bord en place, il y a déjà une discussion et puis les GREC NFTO pour faire le gouvernement et puis ces informations qui sont nécessaires pour faciliter le paiement de l'argent par la banque. Nous ne pouvons pas dire ça en compte NFTO, là ça va aller direct pour les femmes. Donc, au moins, nous avons un progrès. Ça nous voulait faire actuellement et puis ça va être responsabilité de là. Parce que quand le ministre nous a mis un petit programme en place pour ça, nous nous vivons à 4.2 millions de dollars, mais tu dis que c'est 4.5 millions de dollars. 4.5 millions de dollars, ça a un NFT qui a duré almost 2.2 millions de dollars. Donc, ça, c'est des dettes que nous avons payées. En addition pour le salaire, ces staff members, ces staff members, nous avons pour un encouragement tout, parce que il y a un peu de temps pour vous faire un paiement, soit que vous avez un petit check out pour que vous faites un travail. Mais si le ministre agricole là, tout ça là, pas comme des habitants. Il y a un principe et une inspection pour faire assurer que fixe ne soit pas vu en ces conditions qui ont été créées en temps passé, les UIV à l'Angleterre. Si vous avez un peu de temps, ces femmes là, nous satisfait qui a consistently by vocal fig nous nous pas by 100% inspection but ces femmes là nous working in assist qui bri assistance pour um pour du vocal fig you can nous can inspect you please 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 um go have pas ces femmes là nous describe comme um a consistent farmer living pour vocal fig ek monsieur madame ça c'était la voix du ministre de la responsabilité pour l'agriculture, c'est aussi honorable Ezekiel Joseph, à ce situation de paiement pour les femmes qui a eu un grand soulagement à présent. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous considérer la vie. Je vous remercie pour l'autre nouvelle incroyable. Je vous souhaite tout le monde une bonne fin de semaine. Et ça, c'est le mon vieux pour ce tour. Merci à Pearl Primus. Et brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.